One of the coolest things about YouTube is being able to see how far a person has come over the years. Try doing this. Go to your favorite YouTuber's homepage, go to their videos tab, switch the order of the videos to reverse chronological, and try watching the first video they ever released. It's me, Video Game Donkey. Uh, I'm gonna beat this whole Battletoad game in one shot, basically. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die once. And I'm off to a pretty good start. Sometimes you'll see a YouTuber who's a genius, someone who has a clear vision for what he wants his channel to be about, even five plus years ago. Mm. Oh, there. Weird video glitch there. Sorry about that. Yeah, but I didn't do uh, it. And I keep, um. Keep going. Still on this first life. Other times you'll see something a bit more spontaneous and lucky. Take a look at KSI's YouTube channel and do the exact same thing. You'll find a funny care package kill in Modern Warfare 2 that ended up launching his now multi-million dollar career. UAV recon ready for deployment. Okay. One of the things I like doing the most on these videos is going into the comments section and seeing what people are saying. Normally it's filled with dumb spam. After all, you gotta know who's watching this in 2016, right? But one copy-pasted comment that I've always found interesting is whenever someone says, zero minutes, zero seconds, the birth of a legend. It's not much better than any of the other spam thrown out on YouTube, but it's interesting. It's a comment that encapsulates pretty well just how cool it is that we get to see a success story which started right before our very eyes with this single minute long video. It might seem like every time you go to a YouTube channel like this, it'll be the same thing over and over. Birth of a legend, birth of a legend. Everyone just saying how much they love their favorite YouTuber. But for better or worse, that's not always the case. Let's rewind the clock back to the year 2009. Do you guys remember what was king of YouTube back then? This was the year the record-setting Modern Warfare 2 was released that sold an insane 4.7 million copies in the US and UK alone within 24 hours of release. It was a huge success that was partially due to the mainstream media coverage around the game's controversial airport level, or maybe it was the critical acclaim the game's predecessor had received, but whatever the reason might be, this game was a hit. Gaming has always had a pretty solid presence around YouTube, even back then, but rather than it being about Let's Players and their overreactions to scary games like it is today, YouTube's gaming space was massively successful in the realm of Call of Duty videos. And in October of 2009, one of the community's pioneers, the one and only XJaws, otherwise known as Sam, would create a YouTube account and start uploading Modern Warfare 2 gameplay. He was pretty good at the game, and he uploaded some impressive videos with solid kill death ratios that got him a couple hundred, couple thousand views. Eventually, he'd make some projects that fit into the YouTube algorithm a bit better and drew some attention to his channel, how to get a tactical nuke, world's fastest nuke without kill streaks. Some of these videos would garner a pretty solid number of views, others just a couple thousand, but whatever motivated him, whether it was dreams of success or if he was just having fun, Sam kept on uploading, and after a year of work on his channel, he would really start to kick off with the release of Call of Duty Black Ops. His first Black Ops videos now easily have over 100,000 views per video, sometimes cracking a million plus. It wouldn't be long now before Xjaws was one of the biggest YouTubers in his community. As the years went by, this kid, all between the ages of 15 and 18 years old, would go from 100,000 subscribers to 200,000 to 300 to 500 onwards and upwards with no signs of stopping. He was on top of the world, still just at the end of high school headed into his friend freshman year of college, and he had everything he could possibly want. He was rich, YouTube had made him a fortune, a fortune which he began showing off a bit often in his YouTube videos. Support me on this video, support the fact that I want to be 100% honest with you guys when the other big commentators may not want to and, and maybe a little bit scared to be just because they don't want to get hate. He was traveling the world, driving expensive cars and hanging out with celebrities. He even got to spend some time chilling with Justin Bieber and began dating a porn actress. Those who followed him didn't exactly like seeing him flaunt his new lifestyle so much and it's believed by most that sometime around here he began suffering from an Adderall addiction.
His audience was fine with his new style at first, though. They sort of brushed it off. Every YouTuber they knew began selling out to the man at this point, and X-Jaws was no different. But it wouldn't take long before he would be marred with a bit of controversy, this time when another Call of Duty YouTuber was found live-streaming on Chatterbait. This was an odd occurrence, to say the least. It was something that most people didn't really know what to take from it. X-Jaws would make a video commenting on the situation, poking a little bit of fun at the YouTuber in question, and ended up using the word whore in the video. This is where people started turning on him a bit more seriously. Many of his viewers called him a hypocrite, saying he whores himself out for YouTube views the same way any other YouTuber does, not to mention he was still dating a porn star. You can imagine, the Call of Duty community and many of its YouTubers at the time, Xjaws included, were still quite young, and this is a bit of a weird discussion to have. Virtually everyone was calling everyone else a whore by the end of it, and around here is when things really started going downhill for Sam. He continued uploading videos for a little while, but he uploaded less and less as time went on. Some people started violently hating him and continued disliking the fact that he was still showing off his YouTube wealth in so many videos. He also made a specific video sometime around here that mentioned he was on a prescription for Adderall, which led many to believe the suspicions of drug addiction were 100% true. And then he quit. He would quit and occasionally come back and make a video or two with some sort of strange philosophical theme throughout the video that many of his viewers didn't exactly understand and often mocked, and it wouldn't be long before he left YouTube again. Rumors started spreading about him losing all the money he made due to his Adderall addiction and other personal issues. Many people feel sorry for him at this point. He was one of the YouTubers who pioneered the golden age of the Call of Duty community's YouTube scene, an Icarus that flew too close to the sun and ultimately fell crashing back down to earth. Others still dislike all his videos to this day, the few times he uploads, bitter and resentful, unwilling to forgive his mistakes of the past. But the saddest part of the story is whatever mistakes he made during this stage of his youth, no one can let go of. Whatever joy or entertainment he was able to bring to his audience's lives, none of it seems to matter anymore. At the point in my life that I'm making this video, I don't know where I'm going. I have plenty of dreams and ambitions like any other young adult out there, but I don't know what I'll succeed at and what I'll fail at. I'm sure plenty of you who are young adults or teenagers probably feel the same way. These are ages that are difficult for any human being to deal with, no matter how well off you might think someone has it. The one thing that I know for sure is that I want to leave people glad that I bumped into their lives for however brief a time period, whether it's a close friend who I hang out with for years or viewers that just watch a single video of mine. But nothing's guaranteed. I don't think X-Jaws or Sam is a bad guy. I don't think he's an evil person or even misguided anymore. I think he was just a young kid who struggled with the massive amount of fame the internet brought him at such a young age and he made a few mistakes. But unfortunately, his story is a reminder that no matter how good your intentions may be, you can't help but wonder, how will they remember me?